pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, Mayor Jones. Here. Brenneman? Here. Kill? Here. Bowen? Here. Matson? Here. Jack? Yes. And Walt Slager is absent with notice. All right, do we have any additions or an approval of the agenda for tonight's meeting? Make a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. Second. Any discussion? If not, we'll vote. Matson? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Keel? Yes. Jazz? Yes. Bowen? Yes. All right, do we have a motion or any action on approval of the minutes from the 1219 meeting? Make a motion to approve the minutes from 1219. Second. Any discussion? <clears throat> if not, we'll vote. Bowen? Yes. Yes. Keel? Yes. Brendan? Yes. Matson? Yes. Any bills? Yes. None. Public comment by anyone who <coughs> will for items that are not on the agenda? Seeing none. Move to visitors. Stephanie with Sioux Land Library is here to give us an update. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for uh, allowing me to come back. Um, I like to visit once a year to tell you what's happening at the library next door. I hope you got a chance to look over the memo. Our numbers are doing very, very well. Visitors are up, as is circulation, and customers still enjoy the expanded access, giving them op options to visit the library when it's closed, too. <coughs> uh, programs and outreach, we were able to do programs for children over the summer, and we have one very large adult program also. And outreach, we like to attend the Hartford downtown markets um, on Thursday nights and set up a booth with an activity. It allows us to have access to kids and get everybody signed up for the Summer Region Program, too. This summer, I'm pleased to announce that we'll be able to do one-on-one -on -one tutoring for a small group tutoring uh, for children so, so that they can practice their reading and grammar and spelling over the summer. This is a free program for people, so it's a way to get your child uh, to develop skills and keep what they've learned over the school year and be able to start in the fall uh, ready to go learning reading again. Uh, Sign-ups will start in April and we are of course looking for tutors in the community so please direct anybody who has an interest to the library to apply for the tutoring position. Service improvements. This was quite a year for service improvements. So we have the expansion, which is very, very popular with the customers. I think it's why the numbers are rising at the library. We are still waiting on the shelving, unfortunately, but in the meantime, we put out more and more toys for uh, and crafts and things for families to come in and do at the library, too. We recently added, and this isn't in the report, but we um, have an educational computer for children that was added last week to the library. Um, and then also, of course, you know about the Story Walk, and special thanks to Craig and crew for getting that installed at Turtle Creek Park. We have the book purchased and are waiting from um, the Communications Department with the City of Sioux Falls to get a copyright sign. Uh, it's required that it goes in one of the placeholders. And when um, that's ready and the heads are mounted, we'll have our first book. We are expecting that this month already, too. Uh, we are staffing the library with uh, Leslie Wallace and Trisha Bates, both are Hartford residents. Sometimes I work there too. No changes this year in employment. And um, of course you know about this uh, story walk um, and the winter reading program is underway. That is popular. Leslie reported today that we ran out of prizes. <laughs> so uh, more being sent, but that continues to be popular with people. And then we are also doing Everybody Reads. This is a big community event where we can model for children that books are for everybody. So anybody who reads and returns a book puts a, this time it will be a raindrop on the wall and we try to fill that wall and let people know how important reading is. And then we will do a summer reading program and offer the reading bridge. And um, that's what we have planned for this year. 
We really enjoy serving this community. It is a pleasure to work with the city and have some new initiatives and watch the library grow and expand. If you get public comments or questions or concerns, um, my hope is that you'll reach out to me. I can be reached through Teresa. And we like to um, continually improve and find new ways to serve this community. Yeah, I have one question for you. Go. Um, how is the our numbers? I see we were 19 percent up compared to 2022. How is the library as a whole? How is the numbers across other branches I similar? Think, no, I think they can only wish we have what we have here. Okay. I think it really is due to the expansion. Okay. Yeah. I was just curious if that if our numbers are <coughs> good in the range or with everybody else. I don't know the exact figures, okay. right there, um, but I do notice they either flatline or they decline a little bit. Um, it seems that more and more people are going online or getting their reading material directly from Amazon. So to have them go up like that is is phenomenal for the library. Mm -hmm. yeah. I got I got a quick. Um, what age to do those reading for the the tutoring? What age of kids do you start out with that? Yeah, that's a good question. You have to be entering first grade and fifth. So it's that age range that can participate in the tutoring. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will say I love the toys in there. I brought one of my boys in there a month ago and I could not get them out. <laughs> so yeah. it's an awesome place. I, it's one of the few places in town that you can take your child yep. and just in, relax and enjoy. I mean, you can go to a restaurant and things, but this is one where um, the kids can make noise and, and have a really good time and are very welcome there. Thank you. That's good. That's good. Any other questions? Well, thank you so much. We really enjoyed the partnership. Thank you for all the things you do for us. Well, thank you. You bet. All right, Scott Boss from Minneapolis County Rural Water cannot make it tonight. He's scheduled to uh, reschedule with us for the next meeting, January 16th, correct? Yeah. All right. So we will move on to the applications, agreements, hearings, resolutions. First up. 705 hearing for garbage license renewal for no back sanitation, Crescent mm -hmm. sanitation, Holty Sunrise Sanitary Service, AOK -okay Sanitary, and Garbage Service and RBS. It's in the packet as approved by staff. Any actions or questions from the council? And then just to clarify, Teresa, so which, and I know this is in there, but um, Crestman, Novak, who, who else services like residents? And I have garbage service. Yes. Those, those two, Crestman. Okay, is and there Nova. any? Uh, the other ones just basically have roll-off service. Okay. One order, large roll-off. Um, and AOK -okay sanitation, all of these are renewals. AOK -okay sanitation is, this is their first application okay. for roll-offs. Okay. Um, I, I will make a motion to approve all five garbage applications. Did we have a second? Jake oh, did. Jake's second. Very quiet. 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 Very If not, we'll vote. Matson. Yes. Brennan. Yes. Keo. Yes. Jazz. Yes. Bowen. Yes. All right. Next up, first reading of Ordinance 749. This is to update fines and fees. We discussed this at the last meeting. There's one in particular that has to do with bulk water and meters. And that is adjusted on the list now to we're going to six dollars for water or seven for hydrant hydrant water per thousand and a hundred dollars a month for a meter print correct yep those are two changes all right any action from the council on that one make a motion to approve the first reading reading of ordinance 749. second any discussion If not, we'll vote. Bowen. Yes. 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 Peel. Yes. Brennan. Yes. Madison. Yes. All right. Next up, first reading of Ordinance 750, Supplemental Appropriation for 2023. 
So it has it laid out in the packet. Anything you want to add, Teresa? Nope. I'm basically <coughs> a supplemental appropriation and then the resolution coming up for contingency adjustment are just adjustments in budgets, not moving any money around or spending any money. It's it's basically just um, changing those budget line item numbers. So if we overspend a budget, it'll increase it or Make a motion to approve the first reading of ordinance 750 supplemental appropriation for 2023. Second, any discussion? I, there, there was a couple lines on here for um, like salaries and that too, wasn't there? Or was that That's in the, the next one, the contingency the adjustment. Contingency. Okay, yep. yeah, I'm ready. I'm good to move on. Okay, all right, anything else? Hearing none, we'll vote. Bowen? Yes. 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 Keel? Yes. Brenneman? Yes. Matson? Yes. Next up is resolution, resolution 2024-1, contingency transfers for 2023. This is where we shift uh, shift some money around, is that correct? Yeah, and so on, a contingency transfer is just for the general fund. We, at budget time, put 50000 in our contingency account, and if there's any shortfalls, <laughs> within the general fund like streets, finance office, parks or whatever, we can use that 50,000 to transfer into these other accounts to cover those shortfalls. Once again, it's not transferring money, it's just changing the budget line item. And this is where there, yeah, there's some in salary. Um, basically, you know, we're showing it in the finance office and in public buildings, but we really went over in salary in every department, but your, your end line item just has to be in the positive. And like in parks, although salary went over, we have money left over for money we didn't spend on the sports complex building. So I mean, it's not in the negative, so we don't have to adjust that. You know? So we just gotta make sure our end line item for each account is in the black. What is the salaries under the government building? So it'd be like um, our public works guy. Mostly that was due to the gauge house, them working over on the Remodel so there. it's part of someone's yes. salary Yep, yep, yep. yep. These guys, departments. yeah, when they turn in their time cards to care. Yeah. Would you you know, this week they spend so many times, you know, in the water doing water stuff or with sewer yeah. or in the public building. So they kind of break down their work for each time card so we know what department to put it to. So would you say a lot of this is overtime then? No, I'd say... A lot of this just a change in salaries, more of an increase last year than what we had. Figured okay, because that was that was part of my question was if, if this was related to the raises that we did last year, um, which makes sense because we do those after the first year, the budgets are set for the year, mm -hmm. which just brings up the question: Is there a way to do that differently, or just you know we got a set budget in September? Yeah, you guys don't get raises until the end of the year. Right. There was a high cost of living last year, so mm -hmm. you know it just kind of all played. Right, and there. we all agreed to the raises, so I, yep. I'm like not all that surprised to see this and, and right. that. I just more just, or is this just something that kind of happens yeah. at the end of the year? Um, most most years we we're pretty kind of online, but like I said, this year I think we just got harder raises last year, so kind right. of right. we didn't budget quite enough. Like I said, every department was really over in salary, so. So in that spirit, uh, because we're over, because of the gauge house by 13,000 in salaries, are you saying there's another department possibly that we were under? Because we did have, we you know, spent some of those allocated hours in a <coughs> segment? Most of them we were over. over. <laughs> yeah, we were. <laughs> I'm just putting it simple on that. Okay, I, just... think, I think sewer had, had funds left over okay. that, so maybe okay. we didn't spend much time with the sewer at the look <laughs> Yeah. You didn't even know that that's why they were smelling. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> exactly. Right. Now we're getting to it. Just making sure yeah. it's you got to realize the gauge house, we had purchased that after yeah. budget. So yeah. right. none of these repairs, maintenance, none of these, yeah. we, we had none of that in budget at all right. because we didn't decide to buy the gauge house until October and budget was already set. So, yeah. And really, the nice thing is the HEDF really. And the Envision 2025 got this up considerably. Oh, yeah, with, with, the, with the purchase, the, the, for the, the initial purchase, right. yep. Right, right. Yeah. Yep. This is just the repair work that we do. Just a quick question. So, like, if somebody's over <laughs> at the gauge house, one of our maintenance guys doing some work, how do they, is that tracked electronically, or is this, are we still using time cards on this? Time cards. Time card. Have we, 
I'm just thinking that's kind of out of date, right? So has there been a conversation of... Yes, there has been a conversation. I mean, that's kind of a basic, I mean... It'd be, it'd be tough for us because we jump around so much. Right, yep. Yeah. So when you get this number of the... I mean, we're on the topic here, so I just I want to understand it. But where does the 13,000 come That That's just like, hey, as best as we can tell from the time cards, right? This John Doe was there for... Yeah. And it could be City Hall even just change home ballots or something yep. like that. Or like balls okay. or... Yeah, it's all public buildings, buildings, but in bulk of it was... Yeah. We know the gate house. Yeah, it's, it's all work on done in public buildings. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? We'll make a motion to approve re resolution 2024-1. Second. Any other discussion? Not we'll vote. Matson. Yes. Brendan. Yes. Keel. Yes. Jazz. Yes. <coughs> yes. All right. Thank you. Sean brings up a good point. We should probably maybe take a look at that and see if there's some way we can. Yes. Uh, technology list. We we talked. Yeah. Put it on with the white. <laughs> with our monitor. With I mean, our a lot of it's phone monitor. apps. You know, if everyone's got a phone, a lot of it's phone apps, and yeah. I'm just thinking, you know. I mean, I don't, I don't want to micromanage people's time, but it is, yeah. You know, good point. Yeah. Yep. It may have come up, up recently. What's that? It may have come up recently. Yeah, it may have come up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the last one under this category is review approved cannabis cultivation renewal application for Grow Farms. The information is in the packet. Andrew is here. If you guys have questions, can it's explained, but can we explain what he's after? <coughs> Definitely. Excuse me. And, and I just talked with Tom today, and uh, you know, we had to fill out a, a new application, and so we're looking at this as a new application, of, and then just um, approving the application to March 15th. Tom actually looked into it a little bit more, I guess, and he thought we could extend the current one if we want to go down that road, too. Okay. And I, part of the reason his license with the state expires, as I understand, March 15th. Correct. And so to keep those in sync with one another, so if he decides to continue the business, then he'd have a March 15 licensure with the city going in the same path and same time frame as his licensure with the state. So this would just extend that license, paying the prorated fee from January 1 of 24 to March 15th, is what I understand Mr. Kennedy is asking for. So would this require at some point uh, an ordinance overhaul to accommodate those types of changes? Or? It, it, it just says it's an annual license. Um, he's requesting a partially year license, I guess. That wasn't anticipated in the ordinance, but... Right. Um, Well, what's anybody think? Well, I think a renewal has to be approved. I don't know how you can have, uh, how we can't if, if your state license, uh, or if we don't approve it, like your business is done, effective. Today. Today. Today, today, today or tomorrow. tomorrow. If it's all right with the council, I've prepared a short statement. Sure, absolutely. That'd be perfect. Yep. Yep. Go ahead. This year was to be the year in which Grow Farms expanded operations and became profitable. Growing cannabis is not easy, but we are now growing robust, high yielding plants. Just a few days before Christmas, we uh, received word the devastating news that the price uh, dispensaries would pay for our product has been cut in half. Um, this was because the largest provider in South Dakota cut their prices in half. Um, this will rather quickly uh, force the smaller growers out of business, leaving the largest provider as one of the only providers. Um, this shocked the entire industry and it's their bill to swallow. Uh, note that this large provider is a cultivator, manufacturer, and, and operator with nine dispensaries in South Dakota. Um, this price is forcing grow, the, the low price is forcing grow farms to cease operations. There's no way we can remain profitable with only, with only half of our former revenue. 
We are seeking a short-term license from the city in order to close out our facility in a legal, responsible manner. Without the city license, our state license is void, preventing us from closing <coughs> our business in a responsible manner. The laws regarding cannabis cultivation are complex and restrictive. Closing out the business in a compliance with these laws will take some time. To be responsible to our investors, we are also trying to extract any remaining value from the business. This is a highly unfortunate series of events, and we seek your help in the form of a short-term license to allow us to close out this business in a legal, responsible manner. Thank you for your consideration. What are your questions? Okay. Thank you. For... Like I tell people, you get what you pay for. So it might, you know, they're going to cut their prices in half, and who knows how long their business will be around, you know? <laughs> well, how long till they get to find anybody else? Yeah. yeah. That's the tough part. It'd be nice to see you stay in business. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. <laughs> Can we do this, Tom, without an ordinance change? Because it is not specified in our ordinance. It is not. This. I mean, I think it would just be, I mean, if the council wants to be flexible with, with the applicant, you could, we could renew his, he's got an application in for yeah. the 2024 licensure, um, but he's asking it for only a part of the year. Right. So, I mean, it, whether you deem it a new license or a renewal or an extension, I mean, it's probably the same result. Um, yeah. well, is there any risk to that for us? As far as... I mean, he, he just needs to be able to have something to right. close out the business. I guess, is there any I don't, there wouldn't be state any, repercussions that... I don't know that there'd be any, how there would be any state repercussions, because you control the local licensing. Yeah. The state right. just says you gotta have local license, local license says you gotta have a state license. Well, my, my instinct is to request that the that the license be paid for in full, and then we could work on a rebate. So but let's just say for things transpire between now and March fifteenth that you don't have to close your business. Rather than you come back to the city and pay more money for your license. To extend it, the license is ten thousand dollars, and if in the event everything goes as planned on March fifteenth, you close the door. This allows us time to amend our ordinance to get this done legally, I think in a responsible manner, and then March sixteenth through the end of the year, we basically do this in reverse and we cut you a check back for the difference. Is 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 my instinct also as a business owner, but also having to pay those fines, not fines, but those license fees, and having done this, uh, in, in my instance, with uh, commercial license plates for the state. Paid for them in full, sold the vehicle, took the plate, took the tabs, took it back to the county treasurer, got a refund check back. Uh, so kind of just in the same, so to speak, or in the same <coughs> procedure. I worry about the precedent there, just being like with a liquor license like mine, um, or like PJ's license, if he you know, came and said, hey, I'm going out of business, you did this for this guy, I want half my money back, yeah. you know? Right. Um, that we would then be stuck giving a refund to everybody that goes out of business. We're kind of caught both ways though, Jake, <laughs> if we let him buy a partial, then we're on the other side. Really, right. we're well, kind of- these guys go, yeah, you're at it. We're kind of caught both ways. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I, because that's what I've been thinking about this afternoon. Sure. How do how do we do this and not be not be stuck on one one side of the coin or another? I don't know how we do that. Whichever way we go, we're changing and setting a precedent. If we say we'll do a short term license, then we're people are going to come and say, hey, we want a short term license. Yeah, but we can say no. That's the thing is that we can say no. To and they'll come back and say, well, you've said yes. And then you always open yourself up for that potential that somebody's going to say, well, we're going to. Well, and I think every story, though, I mean, I, and I'm just kind of playing a little bit of devil's advocate on this. But hearing the story, in my opinion, actually understanding the context of what's going on, in my opinion, plays a big role in just. And so, and once again, I'm playing devil. I mean, I'm well, playing it. on the opposite side it. of the yeah. wall here. But I also can feel for uh, a business owner here who. Uh, supposedly is expecting something outside of his control, assuming everything he's telling me is true. You know, $10,000 for a new business, uh, uh, obviously the, the industry's not booming. 
um, if you've been reading the news articles, is I'm sure $10,000 is probably pretty hard to come up with. That's my, that's my opinion. I'm just throwing out other ideas here. Um, but I like, but I hear what you're saying, and yeah. I, I like that side too. Yeah, I mean, he said since his re, you know, his renewal last year until now to put that ten thousand dollars away. Yeah. So while it may present a short-term um, <coughs> inconvenience financially, it, it at the end of the day on March 16th puts you in the same in the same spot. So you mentioned investors. Um, if I'm an investor in your business, uh, you know, I'm really trying to look at this very business-like. And again, it, it allows our constituents the time if we should choose to amend the ordinance for them to get in here and voice their opinions as well, uh, as opposed to putting all the burden on our shoulders. We have precedent right. set, and that is it's $10,000 to renew your license. Right. But in this scenario, we're proposing this, and then that allows the public an opportunity to to speak their mind. It, it, it's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. yeah, it's not meant to you know, put it on due duress financially on the business. Right. Uh, it's not a new license fee. It's not uh, an increased license fee. It's, it's a cost of doing business that has been there since the beginning. Um, obviously, the business has changed rapidly. I'm guessing we're all on the same. Like, the heart says it would be nice to give you that reduced amount, but my head says it sets us up for every annual fee or <coughs> license payment that we take that someone's going to want to come in and want it back or have it reduced. And I think that puts us in a bad position. BJ, would it be possible to reduce the amount on the fee? I know that there's been a lot of uh, other cities that have looked at reducing their amount of fee for cannabis because the industry hasn't turned out to be the way that it was. And I know, like, I was just looking through the fees and ordinance uh, in 749 and I actually didn't see the cannabis fee listed in there. Um, so maybe that needs to be updated. But the cannabis uh, renewal or the cannabis initial fee isn't in there. but. The alcohol one is, and it's based on population. It's a dollar per person. I mean, is that something that we could take into consideration that would meet closer to Andy's budget, but I wouldn't mind it for the foreseeable future either? Well, we can't change it on the spot. Yeah. Yeah. No, we can't, but I will speak my opinion. I, I think this is where um, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of against these, the, these fees on a personal level. I don't care what the business is. I just, that's my personal opinion. If you've got a business, it's either gonna make it or break it. And I've got a little bit of an issue with, yeah, establishing, you know, fees on certain types of, and I'm not even pro weed. So I just wanna be clear on that. Okay, I just wanna be clear on that. Cannabis shot. Uh, what yeah. Is, yeah. We but, the sidewalks. Yeah, but like, you know, so for those future conversations, if I'm still on this council, if that happens, I think, um, yeah, I just, I, I'm, I'm open to that. But if we can't decide that right now, so I'm speaking my personal opinion, that's how I feel. Let's get government out of some of this stuff. Let's make it easier for businesses to come here and try and generate revenue and, and bring in jobs. Let's not, let's get away of some of these roadblocks, whatever that business is. So. Here's the other I'm, problem. I'm sitting down the microphone. Another time. <laughs> yep. Here's the other problem, Andrew. We're up against the wall. Yeah. Your license expires on the 4th, right? I mean, we're really, we're up against the wall. I mean, we got two days to try to figure, that's, when I first read this, my first reaction was, I don't know how we're going to be able to fix this deal with two days to deal with it, really. Because it takes us on a normal ordinance 60 days usually to get it done. Because he, he was contacted over a month ago about renewing his license and didn't at that time, until next I, week, I get it. And back to what Sean's saying, there's been a change in the circumstances, but that puts us in a terrible position to have to do something that may cause us repercussions down the road. 
and you understand, that's what we try to stay away from. We don't like having things blow up. Right. I'm just speaking as myself because I'm usually getting, <coughs> get some of those phone calls and I don't necessarily like that. In this case, we don't like to see them grow up and smoke. <laughs> oh man, that's too much, Dad. <laughs> no, no, too much. Okay, so yes, hold on. Oh, go ahead. Let me, I'm going to add Mark about it. Go ahead. Okay. I'm the principal investor in okay. Grove Farms. I happen to be Andy's dad as well. Okay. I think you know my brother. Yes, I do. Um, he was my business partner for a while. We don't have 10,000. Yeah. We put everything into the business we got. We don't have $10,000. So, and I know it puts everybody <coughs> in the song. The day we heard about this was a really dark day. Yeah. Um, and don't take this wrong. If, if we can't get a permit, the state become, permit becomes invalid, and we literally may not be able to go back into the facility legally. We may not be able to open the door because that constitutes cultivation without a license. And so that's why we're asking for this short term so we can close this thing out legally. And we, again, we don't have, I kind of wish we had a 10 grand. We so wanted this legally. I have to ask a question though. Had this not happened two weeks ago, how were you planning on renewing your license? It was due on the 4th. When yeah. you say you don't have the 10,000. We don't have $10,000 to put in a, Going forward, the light is right at the end of the town. We're going to be profitable this okay. year. And right now, there's there's no economy of scale. <coughs> These other guys have a seven acre cultivation facility that nobody can compete with. So we apologize for this short time frame, but it's inescapable and, and unfortunate for everybody involved. So um, thank you. You bet. Thank you. Mark, you wanted to say? Yeah, I've got a lot of mixed emotions here. Um, one, you know, we're all, I think, part of these, or most part, the license process, how we went through it, how many we would allow, and how much we would charge, and, and you both know it was a lot of debate. And um, you both knew the risk you were taking that you know, for you, recreation impacts. For you, your competition squeezing out. That's not our problem, unfortunately. And as a former business owner, I know that market conditions can change. People can low buy you. You take that <coughs> risk, sometimes it works out, sometimes it don't. And so, I don't have a good answer for you, other than it's unfortunate. I hate to see the business leave, but the ordinance is what it is. Our fees are what they are. And from now until March 15th, <clears throat> there's nothing we can do until we try looking at the ordinance and maybe it needs to come down because of the market changes, you know? but. Everybody that pulled the license, there were people that paid the 10000 and did nothing with it. I mean, they, they waited, and, and I guess they looked like the heroes maybe, but um, <coughs> you knew the rules of the game. As the guy behind the money, I, I would ask the councils if you have any guidance on what we do when we can't get back in the facility. I know that's not your problem, but right. I would seek your guidance because we'll have this building full of growing cannabis that we can't touch. Right. And, I think and that's a that's a for the state, state, not yeah, us. I, I, I don't, you're going to have to consult with your attorney. I can't. I don't think I can give you advice right. on what you can and can't do. Yeah. Well, but if, I mean, somebody at the state, I would have called personally and said, "Here's the situation we're under. What's the rules for closing up shop?" There aren't any, that, not that I've been able to find. Mm. This was not anticipated when they were on rules. Right. So we're really going to a rock and hard spot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we want to do the right thing. Right. Is there any way you could do 
give us even 30 days. Um, and an extension. That's not a new license, it's an extension of an existing license. <coughs> Understand this is not closing this down even to process the stuff to dispose of at the landfill takes time. It takes permission from the landfill and the state and the whole bunch of stuff's got to happen. So even a 30-day extension would save us all a whole bunch of problems. You know, it, it, with that train of thought, it, you know, and, and we use the word precedent, it, it's not maybe so different than the precedent that was set with the liquor license for the steakhouse, yeah. right? Yeah. Correct. <clears throat> yeah. So, true. You know, if that's, if that's the mindset we take, then, then that's probably... I, I would say, can we just give them an additional 30 days to pay for another year's license? Then if it's not paid within the 30 days, then, you know, you don't have a license anymore. And, and I would suggest to you, you may not be setting precedent if this is done in contemplation of a business going out of business and not applying ever for another permit. It's, that's a way different situation than somebody saying, you know, I just want right. this time. This is a unique set of circumstances <coughs> that that may not be, I'm not a lawyer, but may not be precedent setting. So that I, may not be a problem And for like you said, I, I think you, if it was our own personal decisions without other implications, we'd probably have a different answer for you, but it's, there are lots of unique yes, situations that we hear on a regular basis with a request to waive or not charge or reduce, and it's difficult um, to be fair. We're trying to avoid having a building full of cannabis that nobody can touch. Yeah. So that's, what, that's our, one so, of our biggest concerns. So what we did with the steakhouse <coughs> was, right, because their uh, license was up, their liquor license was up, right? They renewed. And they renewed that, or did we? No, 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 we, we never basically renewed. just we extended voted their proposal. to extend that for a year, correct? Yes, we just extended their proposal. We extended their proposal for a year, so they paid their 10 grand. another year to get up and going. Right? Yeah. Maybe. Whereas we could have put that on the open market. So I think when we look at it from that context, from that lens, I would be in favor of doing a 30-day extension, get your crap out of there, get rid of it, like starting tomorrow, and close up shop. I mean, that's where, I mean, I've, yeah, I mean, I, I want to voice my this, opinion. Yeah. yeah. You can get this wrapped up in a month, I mean, because that's, that's well short of your initial request here. Yes. But I think we're good. We can't do it without, <coughs> without a payment of some sort, right? Why? Just extend their license and not have them pay for an extra month. I would say it's within 30 days payment has to be made. Or it's not valid. I don't know if that's an extension. That's a grace period. I don't know what it is, but whatever Tom says, it should be. It kind of sounds like that. Because a new application does require the fee to be paid when the application. I think we want to extend the current yeah. one. That's what we talked about. Because then that kind of puts that. Yeah, kind of gets rid of that fee requirement. It's extended with payment due on whatever date. Yeah. It would require <coughs> the new application to be considered within 30 days or at the end of 30 days. If that's so we can extend the existing contract starting for 30 days legally. We can do this legally. The license. The ordinance doesn't address license, any yes. of that. I mean, it just says it's an annual license. I yeah. see your lease expires on 2 1. So, I mean, is there any point in extending this past 2 1? My lease has been for five years. Oh, he's that's oh, 2027. Okay, that was like, all right, <laughs> got it. 2027. All right, yeah, we can't extend it though. <laughs> I'd like to approve. I don't know what motion to make, but generally, what I would say is I would like to approve it with a grace period of 30 days to make payment. I would second that motion. If it's a motion. If it's a motion. <laughs> I think it was a question, Tom. <laughs> so it'd be to extend the current license yes. for 30 days to allow... Give a 30-day payment a, extension. A new license application would have to be submitted with full payment for approval by February 1? Yes. 
Yeah. Why did you sign a five-year cannabis business lease on 1229 to 23? That is the, the uh, I didn't sign it on 1229. That was the lease that I signed uh, when I left the building. Um, and that was a refresh of the existing lease. Uh, uh, property in, owner. Uh, the property owner renewed it on 1229. Yes. Of 23. Through 2 1 of 27. Okay, so we have a motion and a second, which is, what's the, somebody want to read it? <laughs> yeah, um, to extend the current license 30 more days, at which time a new license and fee needs to be submitted by September 1st. No, by February 1st. Or, I'm excuse me, February 1st. <laughs> September which, which, which All right, any other discussion or questions? It's not as much time, but it's without any fee. Fair enough. The ability to realize any uh, further revenue from the business uh, is dependent upon that three month original timeline I stated. Um, we can do it in a month, but to do right by my investors, I gotta ask one last time if I can have that three month extension because that, that additional time will allow the plants that I currently have in flower to mature and be finished and be prepared for final sale at the end of that period. Um, if I go for one month period, one month time period, that will not be possible. So that leaves my uh, investors out a little bit more than they otherwise would. <coughs> I personally am not willing to do prorated or waived or discounted. I mean, I, I see this as a grace period of 30 days. Our fees are whatever are the same that they are what they are. But then it brings me back to my original comment where you'd have to do a cash call to your investors come up with these funds and then work like the Dickens with us to get the rebate system in place and that ordinance. A 30 degrees period will be will be sufficient for what we need to do. And maybe you can come up with a bigger half your days. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything else? If not, we'll vote. Bowen. Yes. 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 Keel. Yes. Brandon. Yeah. Madison. Yes. All right. Thirty days. Excellent. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. <coughs> All right. On the reports, yes. Mr. Deputy Sheriff. No All right. So wrapping up. Uh, 2023, uh, in my report I did some graphing, not very good at uh, articulating this, but I'll do my best. Uh, so in 2023, our average <coughs> service of the month was 240. Uh, if you look at 2022 and 21, uh, 22 was 219 calls for service, and 2021 was 256. I wish I could tell you why, <coughs> but I can't, because I don't know, because it's just ebb and flow of law enforcement. And of calls coming in. Is this a pandemic in 2021, sir? It was, yeah, 2020, 2021. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know if those more medical calls were going to. I know we weren't very active during COVID, um, but in Hartford we were. So, yeah. uh, but these are the last three years of that I've been here that you're, I've been. You're not a statistician, is what you're telling me. Exactly. So no, I went to, I went to college for criminal justice. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what I learned there. So here I am. Yeah. And here I am. Uh, so yeah, really. I guess. I guess um, what I probably failed to talk about, like here on. In city council means uh, like numbers, you know, you can look at them, they look good, look bad. I guess there's really one, two, three, four, four types of crimes or where everyone called them incidents. Uh, that, you know, if we ever get to double digits, is where it's going to be. I feel like that's concerning, such as like assaults and domestics, uh, DUI, burglaries, thefts, uh, narcotics are the big ones to just kind of always keep your eye on. Because uh, once you see an uptick in that, that's generally because methamphetamine is around and people get desperate and they steal. And so 
We haven't had too much of that during um, 2023. I remember in 2022, it was like every quarter we we're having car hoppings, which people from Sioux Falls coming in, checking doors, and taking credit cards, debit cards, <coughs> cash, whatever. Um, not too much of that. I can maybe think of two streams that we had uh, this year, which is good. Um, I think what really curbs it is our night deputies do a really good job of doing security checks at our parks, storage units, um, around um, our gas stations, uh, a really kind of curb in it. Because over at Coffee Cup, if you look at our call for service, Coffee Cup is our high crime or high call for service. Just because there's a lot of people there, we would have a lot of stolen cars dumped there. Um, and we have our deputies do a really good job walking out with people, find warrant service, uh, people with warrants, people with meth, and kind of scoot them out of town where we don't really see that much uh, anymore. So uh, kudos to our night uh, guys and gals uh, doing that. Um, but yeah, uh, for uh, December of 2023, uh, in the 28 days, we had 262 calls for service, um, which is about 9.35 calls for service uh, per day. <coughs> the only thing that was kind of um, noticeable in this month was we had a lot more car accidents. We had a lot of, normally we're in at four to five. Uh, a lot of it happens at West Central High School. Those students are just, I don't know, they, they just bump into each other. Uh, most of them are non injury. We did have one injury accident, but it was just minor injury. Um, let's see here. Narcotics, we, there was about four arrests that we made where methamphetamine was uh, a contributing factor. To it, um, let's see here. Case reports, we had 15, which was an increase of six, and then we made nine arrests, which was an increase of six as well, too. So as we ended 2023, I think it was uh, a good month. We're busy and uh, looking at the year as well, too. I would say we're a very safe town. We have really good law enforcement that are around this area that are doing their best to keep this town and this area safe. So, any questions, if you have any. <coughs> Oh, we appreciate you guys. Awesome. So you do. That's so good, because I wouldn't know how to answer any staff questions. Let's brush up on those statistics a little bit. Yeah, I'll read a book or something. Yeah. I got a book, so thank you all. All right, thank, thank you. you. Have a good evening. All right. That's what I thought. That's what I thought, too. <laughs> 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 I need to take this off my All right. Uh, next up, Economic Development Director Report, Amy Farr. Thank you. I'm not as funny as Sam, I don't think, but um, <laughs> the ambassadors continue to deliver their welcome bags, and I know that Jean Rodriguez is continuing to reach out to the members and ask for any um, promotional items or anything that uh, the members would like to put in those bags, so she's been doing a great job at delivering those for us. Um, events and marketing, they're knee deep in burger battle right now. So I've seen quite a few people already post on social media that they're having the burgers. And um, Kello will actually be in Humboldt tomorrow, Big J's, um, at 9.30 to do a story on the burger battle with his burger. Um, so that will be fun to watch. And then um, we'll continue to monitor those and that burger battle winner will be announced in February at the annual banquet. That's something new that we started last year. Um, so we'll look forward to doing that on February 17th. So we'll have to hold that secret a little longer. Um, posts continue to be made on social media about the burger battle and so forth. Um, continuing to reach out to people for ribbon cuttings, um, mixers, breakfast events, things of that nature. Mobile app, continuing to update that pertaining to different things that we're doing, the e-newsletter as well. Um, I did have someone submit um, an individual for me to reach out to. Uh, late this afternoon for any member, so I'll be reaching out to them tomorrow to see if they would like to join. Also in the packet is the ribbon cutting and groundbreaking um, events calendar for your um, review. Um, for the development side, um, continued efforts working with prospective um, business owners looking to come to Hartford, working on submitting a few different RFIs for projects, um, continuing to make, um, uh, I guess, retention calls. For Envision, um, other than that, everything else is in the packet. Any questions? Any questions for you? All right, thank you. Engineers report, Michael. Good evening, everyone. A um, couple project reports tonight. Uh, the water resource recovery facility 
Um, as I'm sure you've seen, they've already made great progress on the gravity consolidator about halfway between 465th Street and the Griffin Road. Um, at the current rate they're at, I uh, kind of anticipate that they'll be to the Mickelson connection sometime next week, uh, at which point that we will be on pause and fill um, On the uh, Aeromod site, they're working on walls right now getting the rebar place, um, and just continuing to push forward on that. Uh, the station has been backfilled, um, and work on that will continue uh, through the winter into the spring. Um, and then last thing, quick update on the Hyde 38 water main plant. So the last meeting, we'll, we're making modifications to those plants to uh, stuff that water main just north of the intersection of Highway 38 and Colton Road, um, and then coordinate those design changes with the Windsor Group, uh, owners of the land there, that uh, will be tying into that. So with that, that is that's all I have. Uh, if there are any questions, have to answer them. There's a lot of rebar out there. Some of those walls, right? They've been working on that for weeks. Maybe more of an observation. I was down here one day last week. When was that? Uh, Thursday. Karen and I. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It was Thursday. That's right. That's the day we were here with Teresa. Yeah, we observed that semi coming down oh, Second Street. Yeah, that was after. Yeah. So that was Thursday. Um, Thursday. But it was full of our pipe. And so, just a just a reminder to the to those to those folks. That's not truck route. That's not truck route. It's not a truck route. Oh, they can be fined. We have an ordinance where if you're driving on them, you can be fined. We have to find them first. You have to find them. Find them. Yes. But it was a load. It was a load of pipe. Yes. Blue or green? Not terribly heavy, obviously. Right. But still, trucks are trucks right here. Just to oh, sure. no. um, another observation right at the corner of Mickelson and uh, Highway 38, one of the trucks dumped a bunch of that oversized. I got a hold of Bay that day. Man, that was a mess. That was dangerous almost. Yeah. I, when I went up that way and I seen it, and I got a hold of Bay right away. Okay. The site works. So okay. I sent somebody over yeah. to get it cleaned up. So. Yeah. It would be nice if we ever get that nice GMC pickup if they didn't park it right on the shoulder of the road there. I think <laughs> it's we're not going to be there. Maybe it's that night. Like tonight sure when they're coming home, they're parked on the shoulder and it's dark. Yeah. Right the yeah. middle of the road there. Oh, could be that to them too. I drove by it. Yeah, drove by I didn't notice that last Friday morning. The, the gentleman, whoever the worker was starting the equipment, was had his car parked on the side of the road without any hazards on it. And Nothing. It was just like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we just we could just be a little safer. Yeah, I'll relay that information. Yeah, thanks. thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, anything else from Michael? Thank you. Thank you. Public work superintendent, Mr. Craig. I don't have any changes in my report. I guess everything I we got the Christmas lights down today and um, got those walk uh, book walk whatever things put in on Friday. So Friday, Thursday, whatever, Friday. So I have no changes in my report. Anybody has any questions about it? How much frost is in the ground? Back when we were doing them, we didn't have any. The rain took it out. Yeah, but now there's probably four or five inches major, be my guess. Is, is the red and white pickup with the blade powers, or is that? Red and white pickup. Is that the fire department's? Or That'd be the fire department's got red and our red truck with a blade on it. We don't have, all of our pickups are white. I think it was ours. I'm like, oh. no, that's not ours. I'll visit Brian. They, uh, Whatever was going on the other night uh, with the incident, Tim and I were heading, they were coming south, so from it, I assume, and going double or <laughs> well over the speed limit right by the south bar where all the trucks are parked. Yeah, and we met them, and you can't see the blade. So maybe they saw us well, but it was not. I not safe. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> Way too fast. Pucker factor was high. Yeah. Yes. I have, I, have, I, have, I have thought while I was looking through this, Craig. How are you guys doing on your, what do you need, class three for this? Yeah. How are we doing on that? Um, we're going to, there's another class coming up in May in Sioux Falls that we're going to, they only do the advanced um, uh, wastewater classes like every other year. Oh. So okay. we did that one uh, a couple years ago and tried, and we took a test for your, few points under passing both of okay. us, but we're gonna 
to talk to Jesse about that starting probably the next couple weeks. We're going to sit down and do a bunch of online classes and that stuff and get ready for the one in May. So. Okay. So we should be hopefully a little faster. On this one. Is the plan that both of you guys get your three? Yeah. And exactly. that's what we need minimum for running that yep. plan? So if we had uh, another operator out there, we could assist out there. At least they could run underneath one of our licenses for the keeping right. the plan. Right. So we don't. So we keep in violation of the state. So. Are we at a point, in your opinion, Craig? When we when do you think we need to start looking at we, somebody? Yeah, we talked about this, and I just I said there's no reason to hire anybody this early in the game because right. all they're gonna do is sit and watch and put rebar up. Right. Or they're gonna be working with us, you know. So. Um, we have had a couple people inquire about the job, if right. we are going to hire that. Um, so I would say, <coughs> I think if we budget in August, September for a person next year, I think we'll be 2025. Okay. Yeah, because that's okay. when, that's when you're going to start putting all the technical equipment in and start getting things hooked up, start working through problems with everything. And then, you know, because we're planning on opening up late summer. Is it October? October? Shooting for? We have to have it open by, we're up and running by October of 2025. Oh, okay. But I think we're shooting for like June or July to be actually start moving some water that way. Which, if we pick somebody up, then it'll give them a chance to be able to see the equipment and see the operation, see the plant without any water in it, and under, get to understand it. But as far as hiring somebody this year, just sit out there and yeah. stop out there. It just doesn't make any sense. Is that a full time? 2025? Like that's what I would choose for 2045, yeah. And that's a full, like, in, in the future, there's going to be a person who is uh, staying out there? I mean, I'm, I want to talk to uh, Toby and um, uh, Justin with um, Harrisburg. Um, they both, or Justin's actually one that's running plant out there right now. I want to see, because it's the same type plant, exactly yeah. the same. So I just want to see what kind of hours they're actually putting in out there. Um, we believe that it's probably going to be like a four hours during a, a day, normal day, just to check things over, clean stuff, do the bar screens, unless you're drying or dewatering sludge or something one day, it might be a full day. Um, your normal testing, we think in about four hours, you should be in and out of there. But then you'll still have some mowing to do or upkeep to do yeah. around plant. So there'll be t down times where they can come over, drift over yeah. into town here and help out, and stuff like that. So. It'll be a full-time position, just whether they're out there full-time. Sure. So, and then the other thing is, too, we have to wait until we get a permit from the state to see if they're going to require somebody out there every day. Just to, even if you have to go there just to physically <coughs> walk through the plant, look at it, make sure nothing's going on, nothing's wrong. We do have that right now in place with our lift stations. We have to check them at least once a week. We have to physically go check them. Um, you can get on your computer and you can see what everything's doing but you physically have to go out and do an inspection every yeah. week on them. So I'm thinking this, I don't know how they're gonna work, you know, depends on the way this plant is. It's pretty self running once it gets everything set. Um, but if they make it mandatory, the permit that we have to have somebody out there every day, then we're gonna have to rotate some shifts. And that's Sunday, that's must, Saturday, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So yeah, if you could have a couple guys that are yeah. And that's licensed, where, or, yeah. that's where with Jess and myself, yeah. we have somebody else out there. Yeah. Plus if we had somebody as a class two, <coughs> They could even go out there and just look at, you know, but they'd be underneath of us. So if something went wrong and they didn't catch it, it's going to come back to yep. us. Yep. So, okay. okay. Good. Yeah, we ran into a guy at the farmer's market yes. last summer who yeah. was traveling through. And yeah, I got his name. Yeah. Um, Did you get his number? I got his number. Okay. <laughs> we, had a, we actually had a gentleman from around this area that um, sent us over all of his information and he's qualified. Yeah. Well, so we hang out to it. Yeah, this guy's a South Dakota kid. He's a little, we can, okay. so, yeah, someplace in mm -hmm. South. Um, cool. To your point about the electronics and having too many different things to do it on a mobile app, uh, that's, there's a lot of options out there. I think there's, there's to plant that seed. There's a lot of options out there. There's a way to do that to get away from paper, but definitely. Can, can, can they do it on flip phones? <laughs> Well, that, that's, that's, that's that could be the catch. We even got flip phones. <laughs> solid question. That's a solid question. No. <laughs> so what you're saying is time is stood still. Yeah, he would have seen some phones. That's what he's got. Wow. Always, 
Always in the gym. Always something going on. <laughs> you look like you're not doing that to us, and you're doing it. Uh, all right. Thank you, Craig. Any other questions for him? Now we'll move on to Karen's report, finance officer. Yeah, my report's in the packet. I don't have anything to add. Um, I do have one action item to set it to the election. For next year, we're going to have three open seats. Um, ward one, there's the one year and the two year, and ward two and three, a two year seat in each ward. So um, normally, four open seats. pardon? Four open seats. Um, four or four? Yeah. Sorry, can't talk to <coughs> um, So yeah, normally um, the state regulates when elections are, and Hartford has always done the second <coughs> Tuesday in April which is April 9th this year. Um, so, just need a motion on setting the election date. What day is it? It says the 19th in the top paragraph, and it says the 4th and the 2nd paragraph. Yeah, yeah. And yeah Teresa. Is, I have I a roll on my report <laughs> under possible action. It's not the 4th, it is the 9th. <laughs> it's on the top. Tuesday. On the agenda and on top, it's right. <laughs> we just yeah, had this we just have this discussion. Well, it says the 19th. Oh, it says the 19th. Yeah, well, on the background right. summary. I can see on the calendar is the 9th. So. No, yeah, you got three different dates. Oh. <laughs> so, April 9th is the date. Do you have any Christmas? Do you have your template? It's all those coffee and drugs. Yes, yeah. 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 I have been on uh, a, a lot of drugs the last yeah, couple of weeks. Drops. I'm just that's telling you. Drops. Medication. All right. We need that. I have a lot of make a motion to set the election date of April 9th. 2024. <coughs> Second. Any discussion? If not, we'll go. <coughs> yes. Fred. Yeah. Keel. Yes. Jazz. Yes. Bowen. Yes. Uh, Karen, you really missed an opportunity. You should have really tooted the horn here on this uh, 95000 of interest that we picked up. So, oh, my fun fact. Yeah. Yes. You should have reiterated yes. that. Yes. You should have probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah. That is. That's awesome. Yeah. That was so. Pleasantly surprised when I saw it. it was that much more. I also like seeing the uh, year to date. The revenue is a million dollars higher, and the expenses are six hundred thousand more. Mm -hmm. Excellent man. Is statistics. Yeah, it's numbers. Good management. <laughs> Good phones. <laughs> it's yeah. not spending Good for data phones. plans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll move on to Teresa's report. I'm not going to talk much. They already gave you the project yep. update. Um, basically, um, the new chamber director, Wynn Hill, is going to start tomorrow. We have orientation at 10 o'clock. So, um, met with Scott Schrader with the, the new chamber president today just to make sure we're all on the same page of what she should be doing, what she should not be doing. So, you know, um, we give one direction to her versus from 20 different people, and whatnot. So, kind of lay all that out and we will get her going tomorrow and we'll start working with her to get her up to the, the chamber website and software program or whatnot and start getting her trained. So. Who's her direct report? I mean, are you her direct report? Is Ava? Okay, so you're her direct report. Who is, yeah. what's kind of the structure of that of who's telling her what to do? So I, I talked with Scotty today and what's been an issue in the past is this, this position is, you know, there's the chamber board, there's all these committees they yep. have with several people. Somebody will say, hey, do this. Maybe the same person on the same, or not the same person, yep. but somebody on that same committee. Hey, we know we want you to do that. They get a lot of different directions. And I told Scotty, I don't want to start this off this way. I said, if your committees want, think that this person should be doing this or not this or whatever, they need to report it to you, you right. report it to me, and yep. then we'll, we'll get it implemented, you know, if it's sound or right now. So there's a solid chain of command there. Yep. So yep. they're not taking direction from several people in different direction either. Yeah. So. And yeah, he, he totally agrees. He said yes, he'll reiterate that to his members of his board. So, okay. yeah. yeah, and I'd say, we're going to watch that to make sure that yeah. it doesn't get... So we want to start this off right, right so we don't have any yep. issues. No, in my opinion, anyway. So yeah, so we'll, we'll work with her and start getting her going. Um, I will talk with her, you know, this is a salary position, and we've talked about some weeks she'll be working, you know, whatever events are coming up, might work quite a few hours, some not so much, but um, 
especially here this beginning while she's training. Um, I'm gonna try to figure out at least a couple, three dates where she'll have set hours in here. So yeah. you guys will know when to get hold of her or the chain where people know when to come to the meetings. Is she gonna come to the her. meetings or not, is that? I'm, I'm, I talked to her about coming to the next meeting to kind okay. of introduce herself to everybody, you know, those that weren't on yep. the meetings after we get her started. So I kind of lay her down coming to the next meeting okay. to do that. And, and she'll be, you know, starting to attend the chamber meetings and whatnot. So we'll go through all that tomorrow with her. <coughs> So, yeah, um, besides that, I guess the only other thing is um, we talked about putting in, um, RFIs out for IT service. I did send them to about, um, I think, 11 different companies, gave them to the end of this month, January, for proposals. I have been contacted by a couple already for just more information, so hopefully we'll get a few proposals in that we can compare and then decide how we want to move forward with that. So. <coughs> other questions? Uh, the township thing is that kind of calmed down a little bit, or do we know we're, wait, is, we're really waiting on them? Like I put in my report, I, we okay. have, no. I haven't been contacted at all, and you haven't yeah. been contacted directly no. anything from. Okay. We kind of kept it with them to attorney contact us. And yep. Awesome. Okay, and evaluations you got all done. Is anybody <coughs> in the council yep. wants to They're stop all. and take a look at them? You can. All right, anything for Teresa, anything else? If not, we'll move on to the new business. First up is a <coughs> purchase of the new transit van. It's in your packet. We talked about this just a little at the last meeting. Right, so I placed on the agenda um, for this meeting. Um, like discussed, Rox has this van. Um, it's basically, it's not a bus, 10 passenger bikes. A seven passenger van, kind of a, a longer extended van with the higher ceilings. It could get um, five pass seated passengers in it with two wheelchairs, or you can get one wheelchair in it, and, and there would be like a flip down seat that would go into that other place of the wheelchair. So, um, could be up to seven passengers on this van if we chose to move. This is a brand new van they purchased. Um, what they had originally purchased for, town didn't work out, so they have it available. They're offering it to us. You know, our original plan was, you know, our bus is no longer viable, so we were gonna, Rox was gonna apply for a grant this year for us. It takes about a year to hear from that. We were thinking 2025, we would possibly get a van. Just kind of lose that timeline up a year if we choose to move forward with this. Um, put, they gave us um, kind of a layout of the van. I put that in the pack, but plus they gave us um, the invoice for the van, you can see the actual dollar amount, and they put a few statistics there, if you've noticed on the bottom, as far as kind of who drives it and what kind of trips they do. Usually, two to four people a trip is usually what we get, so we don't have a large ridership. You know, obviously, we'd like to see that grow, but this would allow for some growth in that. They think it could probably cover us for at least next five to seven years going the, this route, which at that time, maybe we'd want to look at another piece of equipment, but... Um. Probably better gas mileage. <coughs> huh? Probably better gas mileage. Yes. Um, one small. thing about there, probably better gas mileage than an actual bus. It will be easier to maneuver than an actual bus. They mm -hmm. added the extra heater. That's great. Okay. So... To approve the what? purchase of the new transit bus. I'll second. Any <coughs> discussion? I've got a couple questions mm -hmm. real quick. So, our, if we move through with this, we buy the, it's it's our it's the city's bus, or it, and the state where it's a share of the state pays eighty percent. We pay twenty percent. I understand that. Who owns the bus? It'll be titled in the state. Yeah. Okay. How long is this program going for? Because this we're on this program with rocks, right? Mm -hmm. Is there a, uh, a an, an end time in this? This is just something that's just out there. To the council. It's, yeah, I, I mean, every year, I mean, you have, I think you have to give so many notice if you want to end your transit with it. I don't know if it's 90 days. So the only cost that we have is the 20%. I won't say it's the only cost. The only cost in this bus is this 20%. Now we contract with Rocks to manage the system and that's $7,000 a year. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we have obviously maintenance. <coughs> Rocks pays for all the maintenance. So then we have 
Uh, they pay the driver. They pay the driver, pay the, the hiring. Yeah. The gas. The gas, mm -hmm. all the maintenance. The only thing we pay for, obviously we'll pay our 20% for yep. the bus, but then the 7,000 covers so. all management costs, all hiring, maintenance. 7,000 is a flat amount. so much per mile. Nope, nope, it's straight so 7,000. Yeah. As long as we want this particular vehicle, it's ours. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so the other van was ours, though. The other van that we yes. saw. Okay. Yeah. And that, that, that we had not gotten through its grant program. We had a, bought a used one okay. from another community, and yeah. So. Got it. Okay. And we actually got six thousand. So our work. Yes. Net and net. and and Rox says we can use all that we got from that proceed. Right. So we're going to net this at sixteen. So right. Twenty-two. <laughs> exactly. So I, I I think it's a pretty right. good deal and gets us up and going. Any other comments, discussion? <coughs> Not, we'll vote. Vote. Yes. 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 Heal. Yes. Brennan. Yes. That's it. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Next up, we got a couple of marijuana <coughs> appointments. Sorry, Craig, I didn't talk to you, but I'm assuming you're okay with staying on. Yep. So uh, each year we put on one member from the staff, one member from the city council. I did talk with Chris today. I would like to appoint uh, <coughs> Craig Wagner from the staff, Chris Waslager from council for one more year on the park and rec board. Motion to approve. Second. Any other discussion? If not, we'll vote. Yes. Brennan. Yes. Teal. Yes. Jazz. Yes. Bowen. Yes. All right. Uh, executive session. We need a motion for executive session for just economic development. I don't think we have anything, do we, for personnel? Teresa. I do have the evaluations. If you want to look at them, talk about them a little bit. That's up to you guys. Oh, we want to look at the. Uh, I'll make a motion to go to executive session for economic development personnel. All right. Second. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much.